Hello, and welcome to the No Signal podcast, where it is a show where a couple of guys hang out on the couch, have some drinks, talk about tech. Usually it's beer. Yeah. But this time, we have pina coladas. Cheers. How delightful. Oh, so good. All right. So, Nick, what have you got for us first today? First story. Um, it's a computer that folds. I've seen this. <laughs> what's your first what's your first impression? First impression it, it's interesting, but it makes you think of the phone that folds. The phone that folds? Yeah, the Samsung. The foldable phone. Yeah. Um that everybody loves to hate. Uh, basically, it's a PC and it's the whole of it is a screen. It looks like a laptop. Yeah. In this, yeah. And then you can just fold it. Yeah. So do you think it's, it's a good cool. idea? Like what's what's going on here? You know what? Um, I don't really think it's a good idea. I think it looks it's, cool. It's gonna be. It looks cool. There's something very cool about it. It's gonna turn some heads, but is it really that practical? Because, assumably, is that even a word? Yeah, Assuming I think so. You're gonna type on like the lower half of oh, the screen, yeah. right? <clears throat> so there's gonna be a keyboard that shows up on the lower half of the screen, and you're gonna type there. Yeah, yeah. They've got some. Um, they've got some footage of. So this is from. The Verge, right? They they yeah. they were given a, a a prototype unit, which is what this story is about. Yeah, um, and they're giving some um, thoughts on it, I suppose. Yeah. So basically, when it's folded, it's the size of a hardcover book, and they've been developing this for three years, over three years, mm. which is a significant amount of time. So they're really committed, and the Verge says that. The crease is not as noticeable as it was in the phone. Oh yeah. Apparently. But does Lenovo make a phone? Or is this is this all they're doing at the moment? I don't know. Maybe they make a phone as well, but probably not a foldable phone. Yeah. What I thought was cool was like reading a book on it. Yeah. Imagine if you like open it just like a book. Yeah, well it's like the um the Microsoft is a it was Microsoft, right? They did the Korea. Um, project oh, yeah. which was scrapped. This was yeah. like a long time ago. I think it was time ago. possibly pre iPad. I want to say. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like my first impression of this was, this is a laptop. It is a laptop, and this is this is one of the dumbest ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I think the dumbest thing about it is, okay, you open it up and you type on the lower half of the screen yeah and then you hold it to read it like a book and then you got like fingerprints all over this half yeah, yeah. and nothing on this half i think so i mean let me clarify um it looks like the dumbest thing and maybe it is the dumbest thing but i just like i'm i, I try to walk the line between being optimistic about new technologies and, and just loving the fact that people are having a crack at this mm. But you also can't help but shake your head that like a good part of this write up and the way they talk about it is um, the concept of something folding in half to save space that that is like a computing device that you can take with you as your primary oh, yeah. device. They're literally talking about a laptop. Yeah. And it's no different from a laptop. <laughs> the only difference, I guess, is that if you want to use a bigger screen, yeah. you can get a bigger screen. I think they said it comes, on it. the plan is that it will come with a keyboard. Oh, uh, really? So, I mean, I guess you put the whole package in a case somewhere. But like, yeah, maybe they need one of those folding keyboards as well. So you can fold yeah. it, maybe, maybe a four-way fold up. <laughs> it's, it's cool, though, that they're trying out new things because yeah. we've had the same form factors with phones, with computers for a very long time. This and they're not of, exciting anymore. But this image of someone typing on it, like it's an iPad. I don't know if you've ever tried to type on an iPad yeah, with your fingers. It's like it's not that. that convenient. Yeah, you, it's a very slow way of doing things. Even if you train yourself to touch type. Um, I did. I liked 
there it does seem there's a few thoughtful touches on in here like the um the way that apparently maybe it's just the prototype maybe it's the real one but um it's got the weight of the batteries in one half of it so that oh, once okay. you kind of like fold it up it will sort of sit there or it wants to sit there because it's got the weight they did mention that they're not allowed to show off like how it actually yeah. folds they've shown quite a bit of it though like this whole yeah. video there and everything yeah that's the trickiest part right because it can't like fully fold yeah. in the middle part there yeah so it ha there has to be some sort of a gap and then what do you do with the rest of it just questions the phone couldn't figure it out they obviously haven't figured it out the yet, phone so. poor poor samsung they really every now and then they do they have something go wrong with their phones and then they can't shake that for years like they're the ones with the exploding phones the <laughs> the, the folding the phones. peeling screen phones uh that's the cost of innovation talking about innovation did you know that the pina colada was invented by a pirate i didn't know that because um i very rarely drink these apparently this is, a, this is a treat apparently it was a puerto rican pirate in the 19th century all yeah, right i love that you've done your research for this i have and it was made to boost the morale of his crew nice and uh but then he died <laughs> and the recipe was lost forever oh and so now this i have is no like idea a... what the fuck we're drinking <laughs> this is a cheap like approximation of what it could have been yeah they were probably it was white let's make something white with the pineapple on it yeah some tropical ingredients presumably to aid against scurvy um well that was a bit of a, a digression but like i wanted to talk about this other thing that's very closely related to the the folding pc um <clears throat> which is that Louis Vuitton has teamed up with a company called Roy, Roy, Royal. I don't know how you pronounce that. Royal? Royal. Royal. Royal? Yeah. Well, anyway, they have decided to um, put a bunch of flexible screens on the side of a Louis Vuitton handbag. And they showed it off at um, a thing called cruise i don't know some kind of a runway event and it's like i couldn't help but think it was pretty cool because why do you need a screen on the side of your handbag <laughs> it's so that like they could change the ads on it yeah a lot of people were like oh you know this is just gonna make everyone a walking ad but that's kind of what you are when you wear brand name things anyway but like so you can get like a firmware update for your yeah, yeah. Tom bag. And i assume you go to charge it um <laughs> But I don't know, there's something about it. I think it's quite, it's kind of, it's okay the way they've done it here. Again, and they're a brand. Some heads. They're a brand that, you know, they, they seem to have high standards. Everything they do is expensive. So um, maybe it's not cheap and crappy. But, but of course, why? That's the main question. Yeah. <laughs> and is it like a curved screen? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I think so. Is it some sort of a new technology we haven't seen yet? Um, well, there's been flexible. Is Louis Vuitton pioneering <laughs> Maybe not. consumer well, electronics? This company that they've teamed up with, this Roll, Roll A, Roll A, they apparently, a, a company that was um, created, I haven't done much research on this at all, but um, it sounds as if they're a company that was created for the purpose of like flexible displays or folding okay. phones or something of that nature. And um, they they kind of, uh, famously, so basically, what uh, what this article says is, um, uh, they created a FlexPi device, which is technically the first foldable smartphone mm. in the world. And they say, if you haven't heard of FlexPi, then we don't blame you, because uh, when Vlad Savov, Savov, is that how you say that name? Savov. Savov. I don't know. Well, when Vlad tried it out uh, at this year's CES, that's the Consumer Electronics yeah. Show, he declared that it was charmingly awful <laughs> which um why was it i awful? don't i don't think that's a, a positive review for your phone but that shot of the bag oh yeah really good. yeah it's really curved eh? i love it so maybe like uh samsung should get louis vuitton to provide their displays well this maybe one they won't have as many issues <laughs> it's just kind of like attached to the side of it it's not gonna uh, be opening and closing 
Well, I mean, the bag is opening and closing, yeah. but maybe it holds its shape for the most part. I like how like these big companies are solving these very important <laughs> issues that yeah, we so have as a society that's why we, these we, days. We thought we'd cover these things first. Yes. Um, a bag with a this foldable is screen on it. Yeah. I think I just like the idea in general of like um, electronics and tech augmented onto clothing because that's one of those staples of um, a lot of sci-fi movies and things like that. Like um, just people wearing really cool stuff. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll get there. Maybe one day. And you can, I don't know, you, you hang up your, your cyber suit when you go to sleep and then in the morning it's charged and you can... Continue to walk around town, displaying your ads, getting hacked. <laughs> what if somebody hacks your bag? Yeah. And then you have like a giant dick pic on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could go horribly wrong or horribly right. Who knows? I guess we'll see very soon. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> what else have you got? Next story. And... Yeah, this is a big one. So I started reading bigger the than story. Bigger than It is falling. actually bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. I started reading the story and I was like, holy shit, they should make it, definitely make a movie out of this because it has the material. Yeah. So two years ago, around this time. Mm-hmm. Um, 2017, for those playing at home. Probably. I'm watching not, from I'm the future. I'm not very good at math. Um. Let's say so 2016. Two years ago. That's the information that I have. <laughs> yeah. Um, this company, not a company, I guess, a group of, a, a hacker collective, um, got a hold of some ransomware software or loopholes. And they released this ransomware. And ransomware is basically um, malicious software that gets in your computer, for example, and just encrypts everything everything, all the mm-hmm. files that you have on your computer, and they then want ransom for it, the hackers. And they usually they pay say, to pay to, to unlock it. Yeah. Mm. Pay us in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin mm. and we'll decrypt your files and you can use them again. And so in a matter of hours, hundreds of millions of computers got infect with, infected with this in more than 150 countries. And let me show you what it actually oh, looks like. This is the wanna cry yes, thing. It's called wanna cry. <clears throat> yeah, because I assume it makes you wanna cry. When it, it does. Happens to you. It does. But again, not as much because when you look at it in detail, this thing is great. <laughs> the UX on oh, this one it's one got click to it's got a convenient a timer of how much time you have left <laughs> till your payment amount is gonna double if you don't pay. Oh wow. And then it's got another timer like saying counting down when they're going to delete your files when they're actually going to delete your files yeah, right. forever <laughs> and it has and it's, it's got a helpful faq it has an faq it has helpful links like find out more about bitcoin <laughs> how to buy bitcoin there's a contact us oh. you can contact the hackers find out more and like about what is ransomware yeah they should have put, they should have put they'll that troubleshoot your technical difficulties <laughs> and stuff like that it's got a language selector so uh-huh. you can view the text in the it's great. That's awesome. It's absolutely brilliant. Good job. And <laughs> yeah, basically, but that's the start of the story. Right. So it affected the government, the railway systems, private companies, everything. Hmm. And suspicion fell on the NSA because they uh, some NSA hacking tools were leaked and published online. And turns out this hacker group worked with North Korea and they somehow got a hold of these NSA tools yeah. and did this thing. And then Microsoft released patches, but it was too late. And, you know, you need people to update and people don't update. So, yeah, it was already too late. And in a few hours, billions of dollars were just wiped out from the economy. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> That's yeah. an escalation. Yeah. So it was that serious? There was a lot of it was that serious. Well, around hundreds of millions of computers infected. Yeah, and like healthcare in hospitals in UK and stuff. Mm. And then there was this malware reverse engineer, and he was on holiday at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and this thing on great post. time to be on a holiday and he was like yeah he tweeted like this is probably the worst time to be on a holiday <laughs> and then he cut his holiday short and started like researching this thing and he actually found a kill switch mm -hmm. which turns out to be a domain name that as soon as you register that domain name, it stops the whole thing. Yeah, no, I heard about this. It's crazy. I remember this story. It was like a complete um, stroke of luck that he was like, oh, I guess I'll just do that. And <laughs> <laughs> like stopped it. Yeah. So uh, is, is someone making a movie about this? No, but they should. They definitely should. Oh. Um, and now recently he's been uh, he pleaded guilty to an unrelated cybercrime incident. So he's actually in jail or something. What? <laughs> and people like who are massive fans of his because of his effort in stopping this. Yeah. They want like the president to pardon him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. There's just so many twists and turns and so many plot lines. And so it, somebody should make him. Has he just gone to jail now? Is that the. I think he's in jail now. Yeah. Yeah, as far as I understand. Oh, man. And there's still almost 2 million endpoints that are still vulnerable to this. Endpoints. Because they haven't updated. What do you as mean by computer. Right. Internet connected devices. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's my story. What do you think? That's, I mean, that's why. Would you watch a movie about that? I probably would. Yeah, I've seen the, the Edward Snowden movie too. The, the Yeah, that was great. Not the Docker. Uh, not the real one, but the. The Docker was great. Citizen 4. The one with. um. Joseph. Oh yeah, that was his name. Right. Yeah. Gordon Levitt Lewis whatever. Rolio. <laughs> Royal. Yeah. Uh yeah. All right. <clears throat> what else have I got on my list here? Um oh, this is this is sick. Okay, so um back with the back back on that topic of being sort of like optimistic about tech but also being really kind of like cynical or like this is never going to work augmented reality right yeah. augmented reality is such a fun idea but when you give it to everybody you put it on everyone's phone and you make you know you give developers the opportunity to um, create a bunch of interesting apps and just let them go crazy it doesn't really amount to anything. Yeah. Everyone's wondering like when... It's like nobody has any imagination. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. But uh, yeah, I mean, depends, depends where you want to set the I think that's what Apple bar. thinks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're probably... We created this super cool thing. Nobody's building anything cool on it. Yeah, I mean, so Apple put out this AR kit um, technology, which made it kind of like fairly easy for developers to make stuff. Although that said, I mean, I've had to play with this with this tech. It's It's very um confusing if you've not if you haven't kind of worked in that uh space before yeah uh and there are a lot of technical problems still but anyway everyone's wondering when the killer app is going to arrive right yeah it's here this is it really this is it holy shit I think so. nike <laughs> nike has created a uh a new app or a new feature in their app <clears throat> all right that allows you to use ar to measure your feet so that they can sell you the sneakers that actually fit you which is fantastic. So I wish I could try this out. How is this different from like the iOS's ruler thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, or a tape measure maybe. Well, they have they have the benefit that it's Nike and they're trying to sell you Nike shoes, presumably. Yeah. So um, they have a library of shoes and they know about shoe sizes. They would probably have all of the intimate uh, dimensions of their shoes. So uh, who better to recommend than, you know, um, so all I, all I have to go on with this story, because apparently it's a, it's a feature that's rolling out in the U S or being tested in the U S. Um, I did have a quick look on the app store cause I don't have the Nike app. There's like three Nike apps and, uh, couldn't find it. Long story short, by these screenshots, it appears that you just stand there yeah. and you point your phone down yeah. and then it is able to measure your feet and it just tells you the size of your feet, but I'm going to bet that it's not quite as straightforward in this and you kind of need to move around a bit yeah it's probably going to say calibrate for like 30 minutes yeah these these you're things... going to have to walk around like doing this and... <laughs> yeah the these technologies they're all about like moving images they can't really mm. they can't tell anything much from a still image 
Um, well, uh, well, I mean, you can you can some of the more recent phones have depth information. Yep. You know, in a single photo. But, but anyway, basically, it just measure, measures your <clears throat> feet, what it looks like from top down. Yeah, seemingly. But then it's making um, so it tells you your size, mm-hmm. and then it um, well, I think it's like you select the shoe you want, and then you measure or it remembers, mm-hmm. and it tells you which size you want, and it tells you why. Mm-hmm. I think this is really interesting um, because this is all about buying shoes online. And if you've ever tried to buy a shoe online, um, something I've done a little bit recently, and it's, you know, you're just sitting there hovering over the buy part, and you're like, should I, should I need a bigger size or a smaller size? You're like, you think you know your shoe size, and then you try and buy it online. Yeah. Uh, and that's what returns were made for. So, you know, and then and then like you Google it as well. You're like, oh, this particular shoe is it? Does it run small or does it run large? This will tell you. But that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well into it. Um, even though, uh, you know, it's it's limited to Nike, presumably, unless they want to license it out. Maybe they can. Yeah. Once I tried this IKEA AR mm. app, and it lets you sort yeah. of place furniture in your house. And how'd you go? It was pretty clunky. Did you place this very couch that we are? It was are pretty clunky. On? No, I tried to place like a side table somewhere, but then it got like all of a sudden Drifted it just away. got really big, <laughs> yeah. and then it was this yeah. giant side table, and then <laughs> it messed up the whole. Yeah, I tried that as well, I, and I love how you put it down, and you're like, "Is this the size it's supposed to be? It's just like a chair for a, for a table, and it's kind of like." half of your size and you're like, I don't know, seems a little big. Yeah. Or yeah, you sort of move around too much and then the, then the items drift around the room. <laughs> so AR, it's not really there yeah, yet. Yeah, trust trust is really important, trust I think. Trust no one. If, that's why I'm, I'm curious to see how this works, if, what people think of this when they use it, because... Um, It'd be cool to try it out. If it I'll, works. I'll try it out so, and see if it works. So, I mean, they are quoting... Um, uh, apparently, it measures each foot individually. So some people have different size feet, really? which would be a nightmare. Because, yeah. Anyway, um, to the point where you, you may have to buy two different sizes. Um, the size, the shape, and the volume of your shoe of your of your foot, uh, with accuracy within two millimeters, allegedly. Hmm. Like that's pretty bold. Does it take into account like the recommended? Because you know, it's like some people like to wear like tight fitting shoes some people like to wear loose fitting shoes because it's actually healthier and stuff like that they probably apply the one inch rule yeah is it one inch or one centimeter i don't know (laughs) i forget um anyway hopefully you can trust them they're a trustworthy brand nike i'm wearing nikes right now i trust you oh there you go first sponsor um so that's what's new in in ar and i'm legit i'm excited about this that's cool. Even so, if I never buy another pair. <laughs> so we have a lot of stories today that of things that are not out yet, and we gotta wait for them. Yeah. So we gotta wait for the shoe measuring app, the handbag with the screen, the hackable screen, um, and the foldable computer. Yeah. And hopefully nobody nobody will uh, infect it with the ransomware. That's true. Um, do we have time for more stories? You sound like you were wrapping up. I assume we have we can, more time. We can go with one more story. Oh, great. We've got our, 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 our masked crusader behind the, the, uh, the camera. What am, I, what am I looking at here? Too many stories. Too many stories. What okay. do you got? Uh, what's the most interesting thing? I was going to talk about AR. Quick note just on AR that I thought was interesting. Um, Google's... <clears throat> Google have, apparently, if you have a Pixel phone, mm-hmm. you can um, use AR as walking directions with your Google Maps. Oh, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. rather than looking up, you sort of like point your phone up and it yeah. will tell you to turn left or right. Maybe there's something in that. We'll hopefully uh, be able to check it out for ourselves. Um, but actually, what I thought, you know, getting away from AR a little bit, um, a, a sneaky little announcement at some kind of a payments conference recently Ooh, exciting. is uh, Apple Pay. I always wanted to go to a payments <laughs> conference. Of course. Never had the chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, good thing, good thing someone was, you know, documenting on Twitter because you can hear all about it. And the um, sort of the big news dropping out of this is that um, Apple have teamed up with a bunch of uh, other companies to allow you to do Apple Pay for things without apps, uh, most notably bird scooters. So if you're in the States and you can access bird scooters, um, normally you would need an app to um, f locate a scooter and then to like unlock it and you would scan the QR code so mm. they know which scooter you're trying to unlock. Um, and they've done this other thing where <clears throat> uh, they've Apple has developed some kind of a sticker which presumably has a chip in it and it's, it's an NFC um, thing. Okay, tag. so you just use Apple Pay and you don't have to have an app. Basically, yeah. And, and scan the scooter. So it sounds like um, what happens is you you go near it. Yeah. Maybe you have to do Apple Pay to like get it to start looking um, or it just comes up maybe. And then it will um, direct you to a website where you, you have to like accept the bird terms and conditions because <sighs> you can't really just like make off with the scooter and hurt yourself yeah. and all that stuff. So nice terms and conditions. <laughs> privacy policy. Um, and uh, apparently that's all you need to do. And maybe you like double tap when you're done so you can uh, get the bill. Yeah, that's cool. So you can pretty much stick this thing on anything. In theory. And so this this uh, talk is about um, Bird and some um, clothes retailer that I haven't heard of and uh, somebody else. Oh, a parking meter company. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's it's sort of like about um, just paying for stuff without needing more apps. Yeah. S stuff in the physical world. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Hopefully, and if these things are cheap, if you can like literally stick them on anything. Yeah. Hopefully, it, you know, um, it goes beyond just Apple. Yeah, but that's yeah. cool. All right. Well, we might be out of time. Is this it? I think that's it. Ran out of stories? Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it for this week's episode of the No Signal Show. See you next time. Thanks for watching.